So now in this video we're going to look at changing voltages. We have the power supply set to uh, 6 volts. So 0 volts is down there and now I will put it to the positive supply and it is 6 squares higher. Each square going up is 1 volt and it takes 1 second for the line to shift from uh, one side to one square to the other. And here is our circuit. So we were up to 6 volts when we came to the power supply here. Now we're going to come to the capacitor. We don't have to actually go right next to the capacitor, but uh, we're going to. So there you can see the capacitor is completely discharged. We are going to charge the capacitor. When we do so, you will see that the red LED lights up. But what's more interesting for this video is that you can see that the voltage rises there. And it rises quickly at first and then slows down. And actually at some point, the uh, current's not going through the LED anymore, it's going through that resistor to help keep charging the capacitor so it can get more charge. Now when I go to the negative supply, that discharges the capacitor, that side of the capacitor is a negative supply, and then we got negative supply here, it is a direct connection back to the capacitor. So it's actually providing the uh, current that was needed to light the blue LED. But I wired these uh, LEDs in opposite directions so that we could get an idea of when the capacitor is charging or discharging. It actually has to move current, which can light up an LED. Now the current's coming from the power supply, and then the capacitor itself provides the current when the LED, the blue LED is lit up. So now we'll zoom in and get a better look at the setup. So as I mentioned before, for a period of time, this resistor is what's changing the voltage. But at first, it's the current flowing through the LEDs that changes the voltage. So we'll zoom back and take a quick look at that. We will first uh, charge the capacitor through the LED and then also this uh, parallel resistor right there. And you can see that it rises and it's going to keep rising as we saw before to uh, 6 volts. You can see it's steadily rising now. We're going to kind of speed through this since we saw it already. And there again, you can see that it is uh, discharging first through the LED, the blue LED lit up, and then now it's going through the resistor. What we're going to do is remove the resistor, and there you can see it uh, pretty much leveled off right there. All of a sudden, as soon as we remove the resistor, and now when we charge the capacitor, you can see it's falling. It's going to be about a volt and a half or so short of the uh, 6 volt. Remember, this is uh, zero down here. So when you get to that seventh line there, that's actually a six volts. And that's because the current has to go through the red LED, but it needs a volt and a half before current can flow through. Now we're gonna discharge the capacitor. So it's going from the positive side of the capacitor. Current is flowing when you think of positive and negative to the negative side of the capacitor. Remember, that's a direct uh, connection right there. So the current has to flow through the blue LED now, and uh, current doesn't really flow at all unless there's more than about 2.5 volts. So again, you can see zero goes up to about 2.5. And now we come back to the circuit. I added the resistor because this is a 10,000 ohm resistor. I wanted to mention that. That's a 1,000 ohm resistor. So at times, the current has to go through the 1,000 plus 10,000, 11,000 ohms, either uh, charging or discharging to its final charge. Now we'll get rid of this. As I mentioned before, we didn't have to put this right next to the capacitor. This is all one node right there because of that jumper. And uh, so as long as I put it into a spot, whatever spot accepts it, the most easiest, that is a direct connection electrically. We have the uh, red LED, so we're going to get rid of the LEDs right now. But I had the long lead, the anode, up to uh, that jumper. And uh, so you notice it lit up when we went to the uh, positive supply. That's because that's the direction. Anode more positive, cathode more negative, the red LED lights up. The blue LED, we wired in the opposite direction. So we had the long lead the anode to the capacitor. Short lead the cathode was up uh, that row. So these two rows aren't uh, connected top to bottom there, just across the left to that jumper. And uh, so now we're gonna take measurements just through this resistance. And so we're going to move the resistor right there. And we will come, remember this is the oscilloscope measurement, as is that jumper down there. So we're just going to move the jumper there. All we have to go through now is 1,000 ohms of resistance. 
So now zooming back, what we're going to do is look at the charging curve of this uh, capacitor. So there's five time constants. One time constant is the capacitance times the resistance. This is a 1000 ohm resistor and this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor which is the same as one one thousandth of a farad. So you multiply 1000 by one one thousandth and you get one. That's one second. That is a time constant and it takes five time constants before you consider it fully charged. So as we saw before there can be a little bit more current flowing after it's fully charged but for the most part I did stop uh, pretty good at that line. You're going to notice that uh, when it doesn't really move anymore, it's about uh, five seconds away. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and it looks like a, just a tiny bit more to the right. But there you can see you go up there, it's really uh, hardly changing at all. There will be a little bit of change, but you just consider that uh, fully charged or fully discharged. And uh, so we're going to start this up again. And now, same thing. That charge from the positive supply through the resistor into the capacitor. Now when we go to the negative rail, as we said before, that's a direct connection back to the capacitor. So the, uh, the capacitor is providing the current as we talked about before. And there you can see that we have the same curve but in the opposite direction. And if I stop it right at that line, looks like I'm a little to the right again. But the main thing is you can see one, two, three, four, five seconds it really doesn't move hardly at all after that. It's considered completely discharged. So when you're learning about that capacitor, uh, RC constant, I should say, RC is resistance capacitance, the uh, charging and discharging curve, this is what they are talking about. You can take that with uh, uh, oscilloscope to uh, measure the voltage and see the curve really nicely right there. Main thing is you see a rapid drop at first. So each square now, because that's one time constant, as we mentioned before, each square that it moves for uh, five squares, it's changing about 63% of what it uh, was before. And that includes the next square. It's the start of the square to the end of that same square. And again, each time it changes about 63% of what it had before, until there's hardly any charge left to move. So, to uh, sum up this video, first thing was I wanted to use the LEDs so you could tell that there was current flow because LEDs only light up if current flows through them. Well, they are forward bias. You don't want current to flow through them with the reverse bias. That will damage them, but uh, we didn't have to worry about that in this video. And uh, then we also noticed that if you just charge or discharge a capacitor through LEDs, they're not going to let the capacitor fully charge or fully discharge. And uh, so we had the uh, parallel resistor right there to the LEDs. When current didn't flow through them anymore, it could trickle through this relatively high value uh, resistor. So over time, the capacitor would fully uh, charge or discharge. Basic electric uh, principles that you learn about when you start beginning to learn basic electronics. That's why I uh, demonstrated it in this video. And because I want to point out in these recent videos I've been making, different things you can do when you're first learning electronics to get a better feel for electronics. So ultimately though, what uh, set how fast the capacitor charged and discharged was this 1000 ohm resistor. Lower value resistor would have charged it and discharged it quicker and a higher value resistor would have taken longer. Also with the capacitor, we could use the lower value capacitor that would charge quicker there'd be less current, the LEDs wouldn't be lit for as long, but they'd be the same brightness. It would just go down uh, quicker or rise quicker. Or we could use a larger capacitor would it, where it would take even more time for a given resistance. So I mentioned before you multiply those together. Again, these are topics you learn learning basic electronics. This video was just for the uh, demonstration. So that really wraps up all I wanted to show in this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.